just want to welcome everybody to Advent Vespers 2020 this year. We want to thank uh, Emmanuel Lutheran Church of Hartford, Connecticut for their beautiful video of Holden Evening Prayer, which they have granted us permission to use, and to Lindsay Varnum for providing our message tonight. And with that, I will see if I can get this to rock and roll. No. We can't hear the sound. Okay. I can't get on it. All right, let me figure out what I did wrong. All right. Let's try this again. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people in you. I am so 
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround us and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Lindsay? The psalm that I picked is Psalm 139, verses 1 through 16. You have looked deep into my heart, Lord, and you know all about me. You know when I am resting or when I am working, and from heaven you discover my thoughts. You notice everything I do and everywhere I go. Before I even speak a word, you know what I will say. And with your powerful arm, you protect me from every side. I can't understand all of this. Such wonderful knowledge is far above me. Where could I go to escape from your spirit or from your sight? If I were to climb up to the highest heavens, you would be there. If I were to dig down to the world of the dead, you would also be there. Suppose I had wings like the dawning day and flew across the ocean. Even then your powerful arm would guide and protect me. Or suppose I said, I'll hide in the dark until night comes to cover me over. But you see in the dark 
because daylight and dark are all the same to you. You are the one who put me together inside my mother's body, and I praise you because of the wonderful way you created me. Everything you do is marvelous. Of this, I have no doubt. Sometimes when I am preparing these reflections, I find that I really need to hear what I'm saying. This reflection is no exception. I accepted Pastor Eric's inv invitation to prepare a homily on hope at the end of October, at a time when I wasn't feeling much in the way of hope at all. Our country was finally nearing the end of its long and divisive campaign season. COVID fatigue was settling in as case numbers were spiking in Maine and across the country. At work, I was putting in extra hours, struggling to meet time sensitive deadlines. And at home, Lincoln and I were dealing with the disappointment of having to temporarily delay our dreams of home ownership and bringing home our puppy who we had already fallen in love with. Bleak times indeed. And yet, here I am, and here we are. It is the second week of Advent. Questions still linger as they did in October about when life will return to normal. Even now, as we worship together using, using Holden evening prayer as we typically do during Advent, the questions remain. In normal years, I look forward to Wednesday evening Vespers as a time to take a step out of our busy lives to gather eat and worship in a simple and meaningful way. For me, Wednesday evening soup and vespers gave me the opportunity to reset, to turn my focus away from the hectic schedule of the Advent Christmas season and turn my attention back to preparing for the manger. But this year is obviously a little different. There aren't in-person work parties, Christmas concerts, tree lighting ceremonies and other gatherings that normally compete for our time and energy. I don't need Vespers to slow me down this holiday season. The rhythm of life during COVID has already done that. But don't get me wrong, I still need this sacred time and space. I still need to prepare my heart and mind for Christ's birth. I think there is a silver lining in this more quiet Advent season. While I look forward to the return of the festivities that signify that Christmas is coming, this year I am solely focused on the manger. In years past, my favorite Christmas decoration to put out has been the Christmas tree. I love the lights and all the ornaments that bring back fun and important memories. But this year, like everything else, is different. This year, I'm most looking forward to displaying my crush. This year, more than the tree and other fla flashy decorations, I need the manger. As I contemplate why we celebrate Christmas and why we set apart Advent to help us prepare, it's becoming quite clear that the nativity scene should always have been my most important decoration. The message, the hope I find in the manger is that the God who is called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace is also Emmanuel, God with us. How blessed are we to have a God who loves us so much that she came into this world to show us love in action. The God who experienced joy and sorrow, fear and anxiousness accompanies us as we experience those same emotions. God is a compassionate God and walks with us on our journeys because he already had his own earthly journey. This knowledge fills me with hope. As bleak as the world can be sometimes, and as we wait for things to get better, we are not alone. And if we ever forget this, we have the manger to remind us. I'm not saying it's always easy to find hope. Hope can be hard. It's believing that things can be different despite all evidence pointing to the contrary. Hope is continuing to look for jobs when you can't even get an interview. Hope is reaching out for help when your anxiety is so high you can't function 
or your depression is so pervasive you can barely get out of bed. Hope is marching in the streets thinking that maybe this time the people in power will actually hear and respond to your pleas and demands. Hope is doing your part by hunkering down during this pandemic and wearing a mask if you need to venture out. But remember, whatever challenges you are facing, you have Emmanuel with you every step of the way. Desmond Tutu said that hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness. I think that is a perfect quote for Advent when we focus on light at this dark time of year. Where do I find the light of hope despite the prevalent darkness? I find hope in the increased voter turnout on both sides. I find hope in vaccines that will be starting to be distributed soon. And if you would humor me for a second by looking at your screen and putting your hands out to where the edges are, I find, and put them out, I find hope that we can be connected to each other. If you put your palms out to the outside, we're all connected, even though we're not physically next to each other. I find hope that as we wait to return to our physical church building on Essex Street, we can still gather together as God's people from our own sacred spaces just as we are doing right now. Recently, I felt hope when I had a beautiful conversation with a friend after a particularly challenging day at work. We started the conversation checking in about how things were going, work, school, family, COVID, politics, etc., and ended with us talking about ways we can help the unhoused of Bangor, even in the midst of the pandemic. We didn't solve all of the world's problems, but to actually speak with a dear friend and to brainstorm ways to meet people's needs and build relationships gave me hope and energized me. And to see the outpouring of donations of needed items like blankets, socks, hats, even in these challenging times warms my heart and propels me forward. There indeed is light in the darkness. As the psalmist writes in Psalm 139, you have looked deep into my heart, Lord, and you know all about me. You know when I am resting or when I am working and from heaven you discover my thoughts. You notice everything I do and everywhere I go. Where could I go to escape from your spirit or from your sight? If I were to climb up to the highest heavens, you would be there. Suppose I had wings like the dawning day and flew across the ocean. Even then, your powerful arms would guide and protect me. The psalmist perfectly describes the truth of Emmanuel, God with us. We are never alone. As we struggle, as we persevere, as we experience joy and love around us, as we wait with longing and impatience, God is with us always. Author Mary Carr recently tweeted that hope is a radical act an act that requires courage. How true this is, especially in 2020. If hope feels daunting to you, remember we are loved by a radical God, a God so radical that God came to a dark and troubled world, not in streams of glory, but born in a humble stable, all so that we might know Emmanuel, God with us. Remembering God's love for us revealed in the manger gives me hope during this Advent season. And I hope and pray that it does for you as well. Amen. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it.
Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. Let us share the peace with the world and everyone.